Hello and welcome back to part 3 of the Karasbane build. Today I'm uh, joined by Garrett Williams, fellow filmmaker, skilled photographer, and um, also a dabbler on YouTube, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I do mostly documentary, short film, and some animation stuff. Uh, my channel is Garrett Stop Motion. Alright, and you're going to be helping me film this episode today. Yeah, should be fun. Alright, so you can find a link to Garrett's channel in the description below. So with that, let's get building. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> I got the edge bevel done as well as most of the beveling on the foam uh, scales for the handle. I can clean up this, I guess the bolster area a little bit more, so I'll go in with the Dremel doing that. Round off some of these corners as well as make this portion a little bit more flatter. So uh, let's get started. At this point, I really don't know what I should do next. So there's several things I need to do. One, I need to silver the blade. I think I'm gonna do my, so far, box standard aluminum tape uh, method with a little bit of a twist. I have something in mind that'll make it a little bit more interesting. That, and as you saw in the blueprint for this that I made, has feathers on this, so I need to figure out how to do that, as well as some sort of handle wrap. Now, because this, this is gonna get a handle wrap, I'm debating whether to seal this foam or not with Plasti Dip. Most of it's going to be covered. I do like the texture, so I might leave it as is, maybe do a heat gun pass to at least make it slightly less permeable and, um, and, bur and melt off some of the, the burrs, I guess, fiddly bits. Oh, and there was one more thing I was going to try. I've been having this problem where the aluminum tape Ha um, tends to peel off, not completely, but parts of it would become unstuck and I would have to press them down and it would just come up, peel off from time to time. So what I'm going to try, uh, I'm going to coat this entire thing with a thin layer of barge cement and I'll leave a little thin layer of adhesive. Um, maybe that'll make the adhesive on the aluminum tape stick better and see how it works. The first thing I'm going to be doing is taking these uh, scales off of here so I can get underneath it. I also need a little piece of scrap foam. I'm quickly finding out I really can't be touching the, la the earlier layers after just a few seconds. I think I can't just roll off with my fingers. So I was briefly thinking, maybe because we're in Colorado, dry climate, technically have a harder time with things drying faster. But then I remembered that uh, how fast something gets into an atmosphere, partial pressure is determined by type. So no other place, well, I guess the atmosphere in Colorado is most likely going to have basically the same amount of some organic solvent dissolved in the air as any other place. It's not going to affect it that much. What, were, what made you think of that? So, in Colorado, you use water... Well, now I realize it's only specific to water solvent. Um, paints and uh, surface cleaners, etc. You uh, say, like laundry, in Colorado, you can just leave it outside and it'll dry really fast because it's a, it's a much drier climate here. Um, 
and that, that will apply to water sol uh, solvent-based paints, etc. They will dry faster in there um, in Colorado rather than some a much more humid place like, say, Texas. Um, and I was wondering, hey, maybe if I was in a more humid place, the, the glue won't, won't be drying as fast, and I have a little bit more work time, so I would stop getting these uh, the beads forming up, making it a little bit harder to work with, finicky. Uh, Where do you have the beads forming? So it's whenever I go back over a surface that I already kind of done, and let's see if you can see it. Yeah, you can see the back here where it kind of beaded up. Yeah. Yeah, and that part's gonna be fine because uh, it's gonna be covered up by the scales as well as the aluminum paste. So in the grand scheme of things, it, unless you're really close up looking for errors, does it matter? No, but. But the second time I'm doing this is much cleaner, so... Um, so as I was saying... Um, how fast gases can disperse into the atmosphere is determined by partial pressure of that particular gas. So it doesn't matter how humid uh, the climate is. I think this is... Some acid, maybe acetone? I haven't looked at it closely enough. Uh, but let's say it's acetone. Colorado is not gonna have a different partial pressure of acetone in the atmosphere compared to anywhere else, unless you're working right next to a chemical plant that deals heavily in acetone. I don't know. Why, why do you have a workshop there? Maybe. I don't, I don't know. Now it's getting political, so I'll stop. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't know your channel was about politics. Nerdy, science, and politics. Not what you're here for. <laughs> Maybe some of you are here for that now. Now that you've realized what kind of person I am. Building things with wall political commentary, that's the way to go. <laughs> uh, I guess I can semi-relevant plug here. Uh, another filmmaker, as well as a friend to both Garrett and I, Jordan Spalding, he and I recently uh, started a YouTube channel called Let's Go Birding, where we do exactly that. We go birding with a um, very skilled ornithologist named Megan Miller, and the banter on that is also um, fun. Yeah, fun, fun, sometimes niche science, cons uh, conservation. Uh, weirdness that we talk about. So if you're into that and would like to see Pretty Birds of Colorado, um, check out that channel. See, now, now it's the dangerous part where it's spilled over to a previously finished surface. Careful not to let the glue beat up. And at this point I should just switch to a different piece of foam because that one's getting nasty, increasing risk. I guess a valid question is, why why are you coating it with contact cement in particular? So contact cement is a very useful glue. It's this amazing thing where you just put on a very thin layer of it to both sides of whatever your two pieces you're trying to glue together. And then you just let it dry a little until it becomes this thin film of tacky, semi-hardened glue. So you don't have to worry about like the pieces having runny glue all over it, um, or or the worry that two pieces won't stick properly together because maybe the runny glue and the hardened glue are going to have slightly different uh, properties. You just put it on, a very thin layer of it, and after it dries in just a a few seconds to a few minutes, just stick those together and it's basically a semi-permanent to permanent bond. And I've tried um, sealing these MDF boards with Mod Podge, which is a PVA, polyvinyl acrylate based glue, um, and that creates the oh, um, PVA glue, your typical school glue, the white school glue, it dries clear, it's a very smooth surface. Um, but, 
I found that the aluminum tape does start peeling off after a time from that surface as well. So I was wondering, maybe, maybe this surface, uh, maybe uh, a surface coated with the contact cement instead, will retain the contact cement's um, adhesive characteristic. What would you say you're doing here? Just attaching the silver? Yep. So this is aluminum tape, aluminum foil tape. It's used in uh, HVAC. So all the uh, air ducts, this tape is used to seal joints of it, but it's also a very easy way to add a chrome-like finish without having to buy fancy sprays because a silver spray is very difficult to get right. Some silvers have that that, that sparkly, speckly metal look, which is not what you're trying to go for. Chrome paint can get really expensive really fast. And if you try to put any sort of finishes to, if you're painting something on top of that, etc., so that you can protect the surface finish, well, those finishers can sometimes make the silver look a dull gray and lose the, sh the uh, reflective look. <clears throat> and paint has, huh? What you was found that? that you found that this works out really good. Who I learned this from via YouTube is uh, Adam Savage. Um, I'm sure a lot of people know him uh, from his myth busting series, and he has a YouTube channel called Tested. He goes into details about um, very, very uh, specific details about tips and tricks you can use, uh, things that he's picked up over his time working there, and it is. A very very useful resource to uh, newbies like me uh, to get that touch of uh, expert advice. That and back to back to why I prefer this method. Um, for painting, you need to prime it, and then you have to wait for the dry time, and then you have to paint it, and that also has a dry time, and you can't touch it. If there's surface ir irregularities, then it's harder to clean out. If you get a piece of dust in there, well then, good luck making that look pretty without going through the extra step of uh, sanding everything down, repriming it, and repainting it. Uh, so no overall, fun. yeah, overall this is so much <clears throat> less stress. I just get to sit down uh, inside, not worry about any vapors, and just slowly but surely apply just some foil. Is it just smoothing down the edges? Yeah, you see where all the uh, little folds, the imperfections are? Mm -hmm. Go over it with a, um, in fact I should be using a wooden dowel because it gets, it conforms to shape a little better. But all these little folds, if you go over it with something s flat, you can push it down so that it's a much better finish. It is aluminum. You can't just uh, force it to form into any shape, like spheres. Basically impossible. Unless you do many, many sheets that you very carefully overlap. And uh, where pieces overlap at a close distance is definitely visible. In terms of prop making, is it going to be camera visible? That's probably not, unless it's a hero prop. Um, but even then, at most angles, in most shots, those uh, what are apparently called crimes in the in the uh, building process, uh, in the uh, final final product, they aren't visible enough. Uh, but they are something you need to be careful of. So edges like this, where it's going to be overlapping with another piece that's going over it, um, you want to make as clean as possible, as flat and clean and as inconspicuous as possible because they will start to... I can confirm it feels like it is sticking better. Is this the first time you've tried using the glue to assist it? Yeah. It's a problem I was thinking for a bit. Um, and it's only really something that you notice after you've been building a few props with it and then after a few months you start to notice the tape coming off of the surface. Like I said, it's like a subtle, it's a very, very subtle thing. But... 
it already feels better. We shall see in a few months. It feels. It's a very long term experiment. <laughs> That's gonna be it for part three of Kaspane. Shout out to Garrett at Garrett Stop Motion on YouTube for the amazing camera work. I ended up talking a little bit more than I usually do simply due to having somebody else in the workshop to talk to. And I think it's for the better because it made me talk about the thoughts I had as well as the techniques I was using while building the prop. And maybe you enjoy this conversational model better. We ended up shooting so much that I had to split the footage into two episodes. So check back next week, yes next week. I'm actually gonna schedule it and post it in a timely manner. And personally, I'm looking forward to releasing it because in it, I'm trying out a new technique that I haven't shown before, and I think you'll enjoy it. It turned out very well. So thanks for joining, and have a nice day.